everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Shox and as promised a little while ago, this will be my 100k subscriber Q&A! Yay! So first off, thank you so so much for uh, helping me cross 100,000 subscribers in such a little amount of time. I hope that you keep enjoying it. So if you like this video, please drop a like and a subscribe and enjoy! A couple of weeks ago, I asked you guys on my Twitter to ask me questions with the hashtag AskShocks and that I would be answering questions in English, Dutch, Spanish, German, and French. I am very proud of the fact that I can communicate with a lot of you guys in your native language. It's something that I work on very, very hard, but I do want to put out a little disclaimer as to my level in these different languages. So first off, Dutch um, is my mother tongue, Flemish. I am from Belgium. Secondly, English kind of feels like my second, I don't know, native language because I speak it all the time. I've spoken it since I was a little girl. German is, I think, the language that is third in line as to what I speak best because I've lived in Germany now for several years. And because of that, I think French has fallen quite a bit in the pecking order. I used to be decent, if not fluent in French, but because I've had to focus so much on my English and my German, I think I've just lost a lot of the touch I had with French. Spanish, I don't know that well at all. I would say my accent makes people believe that I'm better at at it than I actually am because I listen to a lot of like Spanish music and stuff but it's really difficult for me to hold a conversation naturally without having prepared it beforehand. It won't be perfect but I hope you guys enjoy. So let's get into it. Um, I'll start with a couple of questions in English to get us in the mood. First one is from Death the Fire. What was the first game you ever got truly hooked on that gave you the passion to what you do now? Um, well, I think those two are different because the first game I truly got hooked on was Tomb Raider 3. I even had a little booklet, like, because, you know, internet wasn't as much as a thing back then, I'm old. Um, so I had a physical book that had a walkthrough for whenever I would get stuck. Um, that's the game I really fell in love with, but I think the game that made me fall in love with esports or the competitive side is Unreal Tournament 1999. I was in love with that game. I played it all the freaking time. I got to a very decent level with it and I miss that game every single day. At Serbian Potato asks, how did you come up with the name Shocks? Uh, very simple, it comes from the Unreal Tournament Shock Rifle, the Shock Instagib Rifle. I used to play Instagib Capture the Flag, so that's where it's from, although it's spelled a bit awkwardly, I guess. From at Moises Lorenzo, uh, if you're not casting and hosting esports, what would you like to be doing professionally? Uh, that's a really difficult question. I don't really know. When it comes to what I studied in school, um, I have a master's degree in history, a master's degree in journalism, and also a teacher's degree. But I guess you could be saying I do something of the sort with journalism, although it is not like purely on the craft, the hosting. When it comes to my history master's, I. I, it helped me a lot, like it helped me develop as a person because I studied it, but there's nothing connected to that that I think I could be doing today. Um, I don't also see myself being a teacher, so I think I kind of lucked out in what I'm doing today and I hope I can do it for uh, a very long time. Something that I did want to do when I was studying journalism is cover traditional sports. I really love football, I love cycling, I love tennis. I actually love watching any competitive sport really, which is probably why I'm also so, also so interested in esports. And maybe in another life or maybe in the future, I'd love to cover, for instance, football again. At Papi Casa asked, how were you in your childhood? Were you ever shy? Um, I was very shy. I don't know if I was necessarily shy or if I was more like unbothered, as in I, you know, was quite an introvert. I didn't really have too many friends when I was younger. I also didn't care, I didn't have any brothers or sisters, so. I don't know, I kind of kept to myself. In high school or all throughout school, I got bullied a lot for all kinds of things. First and foremost, because I was always studying and I got good grades, which is such a weird thing to bully kids for. It's like, well, I'm sorry, I'm trying and you're not, like, whatever. Um, I got bullied for wearing boys' clothes, hand-me-down clothes, because I wasn't interested in that kind of thing or in fashion or whatever back then. Um, I got bullied for not having my period as early as other girls or for having small boobs and, like, all kinds of stuff that can't help. Um, it definitely made me a tougher child and a tougher grown up, which in a way maybe prepared me for working on the internet, but yeah, it sucked. At Hegnaz asks, do you miss the fish you? Yes. At Papa Darius asks, will NA ever win worlds? No. <laughs> All right. 
Alrighty, now let's try some in Spanish. Bear with me here. Um, first up from at Norse. Uh, la tortilla con cebolla o sin cebolla. Um, I don't know if this is a meme. I think Aranea told me like this is like the um, pineapple on pizza thing, but for me, con cebolla. Next up from at Cachosis, Cachosis? I don't know, 13. ¿Quién es el mejor caster español? Um, hmm, wow, me encantan todos los casters españoles, pero para mí, um, el mejor caster en España y probablemente en el mundo es Ibai. Next up from Francisco Castro, ¿sientes que tu trabajo actual es tu trabajo soñado? Um, creo que sí, um, pero para ser sinceros, durante mucho tiempo no he sabido qué quería, quería hacer, pero siempre me han encantado los videojuegos, los esports, y ahora me siento muy afortunado de hacer lo que hago. De Benítez Manuel, deberemos trabajar para eventos no relacionados a League of Legends este año. Sí, um, una de las razones por qué estoy freelance ahora era para poder hacer otras cosas. Para otros videojuegos o esports, estoy muy interesada en Counter-Strike y ya hice un evento este año, Blast Pro Series, a Sao Paulo. Pero um, no quiero limitarme únicamente a esports. También aceptaría oportunidades fuera de los esports. Pero para mí uh, sería un sueño ser entrevistadora en un mundial de fútbol. Next one from at Manuel Muñoz. Si expect que te invitara a una cita, ¿qué dirías? Sí, como amigos. ¿Cómo se dice friendzone en español? Y finalmente de Jorge González Aparicio. Pregunta difícil. ¿Puedes cantar y bailar la Macarena? ¿Difícil? Baila tu cuerpo, alegría, Macarena. Es tu cuerpo, para la alegría y cosa buena. Baila tu cuerpo, alegría, Macarena. ¡Eh, Macarena! Macarena tiene un novio que... French. Pense. Allez-y. Um, from Elecho. ¿Quel es tu mejor souvenir de interview depuis el début de tu carrière? Moi, je pense que ce n'est pas une surprise pour personne, mais mon meilleur, meilleur souvenir, c'est l'interview avec Dairos au Mondial à Paris en 2015. C'était un moment très intensif, très sérieux et aussi très émotionnel. C'était surtout un grand, grand honneur de faire partie d'un moment, euh, ou d'un des moments plus importants dans l'histoire de League of Legends. C'était difficile car en tant qu'intervieweur, le but n'est pas de se mettre en avant, il s'agit surtout de donner la chance aux joueurs de pouvoir s'exprimer. Et j'avais peur d'être emporté par l'émotion et de perdre le fil de l'interview. Et quand j'y repense aujourd'hui, c'était un moment clé à ma carrière. I think there is nothing left to say. You have influenced the lives of so many people and you will continue to do that. Thank you so much for willing to do this. And one more time for Dyer's his incredible career and the fact that he was willing to talk to us here. Next up, uh, let's do some Dutch because that'll be easier for me since it is my mother tongue. Van Eva Lammers, uh, hallo Eva. Wat vind je leuker om te doen, hosten of interviewen? En wat zijn de voordelen van het vrouwen zijn binnen de e-sports wereld? Aangezien de nadelen best vaak besproken worden. Hosten of interviewen? Goh, ik doe het alle twee heel graag. Ik denk, um, ja, het hangt ervan af. Ik host heel graag in onze, excuseer, Europese studio met onze talents. Ik denk dat we een goed niveau bereiken van professionalisme, maar dat we ook niet bang zijn om dingen te proberen en soms ja, een beetje de idioot uit te hangen of wat mopjes uit te halen. Um, maar interview ligt me natuurlijk heel nauw aan het hart, want um, ja, er is echt iets speciaals aan om spelers te kunnen interviewen in hun, meest, in hun belangrijkste momenten, zeg maar, op het wereldkampioenschap of op de Europese kampioenschappen of ook in hun moeilijkste momenten. En um, ja, ik denk dat ik misschien interviewen wel iets leuker vind. Wat zijn de voordelen van het vrouw zijn binnen de e-sports wereld? Uh, dat is natuurlijk een moeilijke vraag en dat is ook iets waar ik heel lang kan over praten. Um, maar ja, ik denk voor mij persoonlijk is het wel heel belangrijk en heel fantastisch dat ik een rolmodel kan zijn voor andere vrouwen die het misschien ook willen proberen in de e-sports of in wat dan ook in het leven. Um, ik vind het ongelooflijk, ongelooflijk cool dat uh, op evenementen meisjes en zelfs vaders en moeders op me afstappen en zeggen dat ik een voorbeeld kan zijn voor hun dochter of voor hun kinderen. Um, zoiets had ik nooit verwacht en ja, dat vind ik fantastisch. Jeroen van Steenkisten, zijn ik een rollout test? 
Ik heb er eigenlijk gedacht van, wat de kans er in mee? Waar is dat feestje? Hier is dat feestje! Als nächstes is Deutsch. Rauscha vraagt lievelingsmuziekrichtung. Uh, ganz eerlijk, ik... Ik hasse het ook een beetje, want die mensen zeggen, zeggen alles, maar bij mij is het wirklich zo. Ik kan op... Ik kan op dezelfde dag op Spotify uh, Blackpink aanhören, System of a Down, Papa Roach, Queen, Jazz, EDM, wirklich alles. Ik freue mich niet zo so op het harteste van alles, also harte, repetitives Techno lieb ik niet en zeer hartes Metal lieb ik niet, maar alles van 20 jaar bis jetzt, ähm, ja, steht voor offen en wil ik proberen. Eine Frage van Annika Gerber. Ähm, wie war das Schlimmste, was dir auf der Arbeit aufgrund deines eigenen Fehlers widerfallen ist? Wie hat es die anderen beeinflusst und wie habt ihr es wieder behoben? Ja, um ganz ehrlich zu sein, es ist jetzt sehr persönlich, aber ich habe keine Probleme äh, damit, um das zu teilen. Ähm, vor einigen Jahren hatte ich sehr schwere... Probleme mit mich selbst. Ich war also psychologisch nicht so stabil. Ich hatte viele Probleme in meinem persönlichen Leben und äh, ich konnte nicht so gut mit all Stress umgehen. Ich hatte auch sehr viele Schlafprobleme, was ich jetzt noch habe, aber es war wirklich schlimm. Und ähm, ich war auch auf der Arbeit immer sehr sauer und sehr gestresst und ähm, nicht freundlich gegen meine Kollegen und alles. Und das ja, ist ein Riesenproblem geworden und auf einen Moment hat eine von meinen Managers gesagt, das kann nicht so weiter, du musst dich ändern oder ähm, wir müssen mit dich reden und wir müssen das ändern, weil das geht so nicht, weil äh, andere Kollegen, die haben ja keinen Spaß, um mit dir zusammenzuarbeiten. Das war für mich sehr, sehr hart und ähm, ich habe dann sehr stark nach mich selbst nach innen geguckt und ja, dann habe ich gesehen, dass ich eigentlich also sehr schlecht drauf war, dass ich psychologisch Probleme hatte, dass ich äh, nicht freundlich war gegen andere Leute und das hat mir sehr unglücklich gemacht, weil das Letzte, was ich will ins Leben ist, andere Leute unglücklich zu machen. Ähm, und ja, zum Glück habe ich mich verbessert. Äh, ich habe ja, da sehr hart angearbeitet und ich arbeite jeden Tag noch an. Zum Beispiel, wenn ich nicht geschlafen habe, dann muss ich gegen mich selbst sagen, okay, du hast nicht geschlafen, du fühlst dich scheiße, du fühlst dich scheiße, aber ja, du musst weiter. Ja, ich glaube, das war ein wirklich, wirklich schweres Moment in meinem Leben. From Jonas, Ananas auf Pizza. Ja, ich liebe Ananas auf Pizza. Kesselkind, was ist schlimmer, belgische Bürokratie oder deutsche Bürokratie? Beides. Ich finde es alles voll scheiße. So guys, that was it. I have to admit, this was quite difficult to film. Much harder than I anticipated because I think when you talk these languages in a vacuum or you practice them, it's much easier than when you're mixing them up like five in the span of 10 minutes. I hope you learned something and leave a comment down below if you liked it or what else you would like to see on my channel. And I'll see you next time.